A time that I rose up. Describe a situation where I had to overcome obstacles to get here. I mean, constantly. I'm trying to think of one time I rose up. It's kind of hard to pinpoint one occasion. During the pandemic, these were really unprecedented times and uh, it was only a matter of time that I was going to feel like this huge energetic shift within myself. And it was this time of like being comfortable with the uncomfortable and getting to know myself a great deal. I began therapy and it was something that I've been wanting to do for years and years and years and whether it's a fear or a stigma, but I finally put my mental health first and sought help. No one's perfect and it's, a, it's just a process of getting better and enlightenment. Before I started Jubilee Media, I actually ran a nonprofit called Jubilee Project and I did it with my brother and my best friend and a team of people and it was amazing. And over the course of several years, they ended up getting married and doing separate things on their own. And suddenly I felt like I was alone on this ship that honestly I felt like it was sinking. That was like a pretty tough time for me because so much of my identity was tied to my accomplishments and what I had built with this nonprofit. And suddenly none of that felt very important because I wasn't sure of who I was and what it is I wanted to do. So actually it took a couple of years where, you know, I went and saw a therapist. I like really spent a lot of time praying, reflecting, and I had to really peel away all the things that I thought were important to like figure out who I was and what it is that I wanted to do. And, you know, a year and a half later, I started to find and see a vision for what I wanted to do next, which was Jubilee Media. I think the community in general has seen so much growth and strength in the last few years, and I think we're just realizing how much we deserve and how little we've been given. So I think rising now in my career, you know, and feeling so comfortable in all of my identities as, you know, immigrants, Chinese, queer, and woman. You know what I mean? Like things that used to be seen as weaknesses by society and everyone else. Like now I'm really just fully owning and uh, being unapologetic about it. I booked this job and it was a, a Chinese food delivery boy. And um, the gag was that he spoke with a Southern accent. I talked myself into it going, oh, it's not stereotypical. And, and the entire crew uh, burst out laughing because that was a joke. Uh, the joke was that he's an Asian uh, not speaking with an accent. And I felt like I kind of tricked myself into getting into that position. It was all, all white men, older white men, and uh, they were laughing at this Asian kid who didn't speak like an Asian was supposed to speak. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to have that feeling again. That's it. I was born and raised in um, Indonesia, in Jakarta, Indonesia, and I moved to the U.S. for universities. Just the sheer culture shock that I faced was honestly more than what I had initially expected. It definitely kind of caused um, sort of like an identity crisis because I'm like, okay, who am I? You know, I'm Indonesian, but I speak English, but now I live in the States and no one is here. And sort of like a salve to all of that was just kind of embracing it all. Just kind of embracing that, look, I am a cultural mutt and I think it adds to my story and to my journey and I love that. I'm a Chinese adoptee. I was one of few Asian kids, East Asian kids growing up. And as a queer person too, like, I don't really fit in like white queer bubbles and I don't really know that many like queer Asian folks out here, like as I am also very new to LA. It's just also always kind of leading back to visibility and representation for me um, and wanting to be part of a narrative that I really, really needed like to see on screen when I was a kid. It was never like an overnight success for me and I'm sure a lot of people, even Silicon Valley, my role went from two lines to two episodes to then becoming a series regular. Because stand-up, you, you go open mics, you work your five minutes, then 15 minutes, and you rise up to like a feature spot, 30 minutes, and then a headliner spot. So everything is just little step at a time. I don't think there's a huge rise, but I think every day, you know, I just try to be better than yesterday. Describe a situation where I had to overcome obstacles to get here. I mean, constantly. I'm really just deciding to you know, even pursue a career in the arts. The biggest obstacle in that was was just kind of getting out of my own 
headspace of what I thought what I, you know, I was capable of doing. There's that time that I wrote a little op-ed for NBC and I walked out of a, an audition that was asking me to do something I, I didn't want to do. Uh, I thought it was important that in the article I also mention the actions I'm going to take in that op-ed. I, I mentioned Goop and I went and did it. Yeah, actually with 88 Rising, like, um, we've had many struggles that we have overcome. It's like, a, it's almost like a constant and expected. But I think that, you know, from the inception of it, there's different struggles of like trying to be heard and trying to create things that people actually want to see and that actually inspire people and make people feel some type of way. Because there's a lot of responsibility and like eyes on our platform in terms of what we represent, I think that we've always had to challenge ourselves tremendously to not only think about where we're at, but put pressure on ourselves as a responsibility to represent Asian creative and Asian people um, in the right way. I think every single one of us in our community has had to rise up in various points of our career because there were so many elements just keeping us down or telling us that there wasn't space for us, that there wasn't room for our voices or room for our presence and that we would have to keep breaking through and fighting every step of the way. And the reason we're all here today doing what we're doing is because we rose up on every single one of those challenges. Being a minority in an industry, um, any industry, um, uh, makes you how, choose to rise up every day. Dealing with the, um, the very kind of subtle day-to-day -day condescension or um, the assumption that you are not the leader, that you are not the, the one who should be sitting in the director's chair or, or standing in front of the camera. It takes a lot of effort to, to decide that you're not going to, to cave to that. I feel very lucky to be a part of a new generation of artists who are pushing very hard to make sure that that changes for the future. Oh yeah, one time I needed to buy something and the person didn't take cash. I asked like a stranger if I could borrow cash from them and I venmo them cash and then I used the cash to pay for that thing. Which is extremely difficult in this day and age if you're trying to pay for something where they only accept cash and you don't have any cash on you. So I feel I really overcame the odds with my ingenuity on that one.